When one game is successful, there are a ton of others just like it. But these 10 games take it even a step further than that. Today, Game Ranks brings you 10 shameless clones of other games. Number 10, it's called Bloodbath Kavkaz, but it used to be called Hotline Kavkaz. And it should tell you exactly what this game is. However, where Hotline Miami actually has a definitive style to its graphics and a refreshing take on a very old school genre, Bloodbath Kavkaz is Hotline Miami in Russia. In Soviet Russia, Miami hotlines you. Also, where'd you make those graphics? MS Paint? Oh, I'm sorry. MS Paint is actually used for a lot of good graphics. It's just not putting any time into it, that's all. Sorry, my mistake. Number nine, Uncharted is a great game. I know exactly why Unearthed Trail of Ibn Battuta was made. I just don't know how it was made. This is just like an obscene poop of a game. I think the developers may have battuted and this was the result. <laughs> Get it? Cause farts. <laughs> Look at this. I mean, I mean, it's so hilariously off the mark. I mean, it's obviously wants to be Uncharted desperately, but Unearthed is not Uncharted. Nathan Drake is not amused. Number eight, I don't know whether to call this one shameless or brilliant. It's called Legend of Zoldo Lonk's Awakening, and it's a Flappy Bird clone. I don't really honestly know where to start with that. I enjoy the original Flappy Bird. I don't enjoy the abundance of ripoffs of that game. And this somehow manages to have very high ratings on both iTunes and even in reviews. People like this game. I mean, to be fair, most of the weirdness is on purpose. And a popular theory about the game is that it's kind of games as commentary on games. But it's actually praised for its varied gameplay, believe it or not, in building a weird power-up system for the Flappy Bird formula. With the amount of people that like it, it better not have any shame. Number seven, Tattooed Assassins is everything that Long's Awakening isn't. There is nothing self-aware about this game. It is a massive ripoff of Mortal Kombat, and it's so shameless and bad that it actually never got released. There are only a few prototype beta cabinets that exist, and they were built in the 1990s. I mean, this game is so utterly stupid that it has a Zamboni fatality. Yeah. Oh, and farts, too. Actual farts. I mean, the 90s was full of Mortal Kombat ripoffs, but this was just... I mean, you can see it, right? I don't have an adjective for this. Number six. Final Combat is Team Fortress 2. I mean, it actually has its own original code, but I, look at it, it's Team Fortress 2. Somebody in China thought, you know what? We do such a good job making everything else cheaper and shittier that we should do a Team Fortress 2. I mean, there is no shame from the style of every character to the interface, just everything about it, it's Team Fortress 2. In fact, if I didn't say it was a game ripping off Team Fortress 2, you would probably go, oh hey, they added some characters to Team Fortress 2. That's how much it looks like Team Fortress 2. Number five is Star Warfare Black Dawn, which is a mobile game that looks a lot like Borderlands. Now they've done something clever in not using the word border in the game's title, but Star Warfare, that just sounds like something else I've heard of. Okay, aside from the fact they're probably using Star Wars as a keyword for the search results in the Google Play and iOS stores, they're also claiming to be the very first RPG slash first person shooter, which Okay, I'm sure nothing else like that has ever happened. I mean, never mind that if you include spells as first person shooting, Elder Scrolls is that. But going back to Borderlands, that's kind of their thing, isn't it? Character based RPG, first person shooting that kind of thing. I mean, it's not the worst thing of all time, but certainly you can tell exactly what it's supposed to be. Number four, a Korean game called Blade that looks suspiciously like Dark Souls didn't stop there. They wanted their entire ad campaign to look like Dark Souls as well, and so it did. YouTube channel Game Elixir uploaded this, and from what I can find, it's the only actual footage of it that's left because it's been taken down by the company. They got called out on it pretty badly, and did probably the smartest thing they could do and erased everything. Which is much better than having a meltdown, which is what a lot of developers of these shameless ripoffs do. Number three, Soul Hearts is a game that looks suspiciously like a beautiful Wii title called Miramasa the Demon Blade. Now it looks so much like it, there's actually items that are so utterly similar in game that frankly it looks like they were almost traced. Now the developer says that they were simply inspired by Miramasa and that they didn't steal anything like data 
data from the game. It just looks very similar, and that certain very specific things like branches, yeah, I don't know either, were inspiring for them in their style of depiction. I don't know, their story kind of, I don't necessarily buy it. It looks so utterly similar. Not completely, but I'm pretty sure they just traced it, which I'm pretty sure is some form of plagiarism. Number two, possibly one of the most high profile ripoffs. The War Z is a ripoff of Daisy. I mean, look at it, it's Daisy. Same colors, same look, same everything. And it's certainly not the only one. I mean, there's more than a few just literal asset flips of random things that are made to play like Daisy all over Steam. But the War Z was actually big. Over 600,000 people registered for it, and the guy that made Daisy was, well, not happy about that. The War Z was taken off of Steam, but eventually came back on with a different name called Infection Survivor Stories. It's still the same game though, so honestly, support the original, go with DayZ. And finally, number one, Crouch and Dragon Legends caused Unico Interactive, the makers of the game, to get in trouble. I mean, 1.6 million dollars in trouble. And look at this screenshot of the game, it's the same thing. It's almost just a reskinned Hearthstone. It's been taken off various app stores. I wonder why. Probably the copyright violation stuff. But even the logos, the one on the top is the Chinese Hearthstone logo, and the one on the bottom is Crouching Dragon Legends. I mean, that's just wrong. Shameful, one might call it. And I know this is gonna generate some good discussion, so I will see you in the comment section. Also, please do us a big favor, click the like button. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do it. We upload brand new videos every single day of the week. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video, and we will see you next time right here on Game Ranks. Yes.